So open intelligence subsumes conventional intelligence. And what that means is subsume means that it, it, it includes and contains everything. It doesn't kick anything out. It doesn't need to let go of anything. It doesn't need to accept or reject anything. Subsume means it just contains and includes everything all at once. So like, like a crystal ball, it reflects. It contains all images. You know, it's not trying to spit some images out. It just includes and contains them all. You know, this is like open intelligence, this great crystal ball. So you heard the terminology open intelligence and data. So data is thoughts, emotions, sensation, people, places, things. Open intelligence is inseparable from data. Data are inseparable from open intelligence. Like in the crystal ball, the images don't have an independent nature of their own. You know, in the crystal ball, an image of you is not really a special you inside that crystal ball. It's the crystal ball. So open intelligence, it, you could say it's a more comprehensive type of intelligence, knowing and including all knowledge. So it's good to know the difference between conventional intelligence and open intelligence. Conventional intelligence is how most of the world is operating. Giving independent power and meaning to thoughts, emotions, sensations, belief systems, assumptions. Now we all know what happens is, you know, like you heard in the previous talk, it's like narrowing in, you, your focus narrows in. It's like being in the valley floor where you, you don't really see everything clearly. You know, you're basing all knowledge on very limited sets of rules and regulations. So the importance in this training is to have the instinctive recognition that open intelligence and data are inseparable. The outcome of indulging in, in, in anger is, you know, you, your words are harsh. You know, there might be some blame, criticism, judgment, sarcasm, form of anger in disguise. You know, basically, I mean, you can check in your direct experience. When you're angry and somebody's made you angry, and conventionally, how do you react to that person? You know, you, you have all kinds of stories, you have the emotions, you have the sensations coming up. In my experience, it's never been pleasant, and it's never been something I wanted to continue on with. You know, I reached the point where my anger, indulging in anger, did not serve me anymore. It didn't serve me to continue on criticizing, indulging my anger, being sarcastic, because it just wasn't... I didn't feel good, and I know the other people didn't feel good. So the point is, is like when you see that conventional intelligence is not really bringing about peace of mind, it's not bringing about happiness in all moments, it's not bringing about a sense of freedom for everyone, and it's time that we say, okay, let's try something different. <coughs> In balanced view, we let all data be as they are. Allow data to flow on by. And then when we do this, we see there's not... The, the reaction becomes less and less impulsive. So anger, for instance. Next time somebody makes you really angry, you know, just in that moment, let all of the thoughts about anger be as it is. Let the emotions, let the sensations just be as they are. Just like you would let the breeze in this air be as it is. And you repeat that for short moments because it's not like you immediately, it's resolved without some practice. You know, it takes some practice. So practice up, not indulging in something like anger. And, and the, the reason being so that you become more and more familiarized with this more comprehensive type of intelligence that knows what to say and what to do in all circumstances. From my own experience, what I've seen with letting anger be as it is, is that if there is a situation where something happens, you know, there's still this open-hearted connection. There's, a, there's an ability to see clearly and make a powerful decision, discernment. You know, clear discernment, not just a reactivity. You know, seeing that we do have many, many solutions when you're not 
hooked on the blame, the criticism, you know, you see another solution. You see another human as somebody like you who has data streams and they are also reacting to their thoughts, their emotions, their sensations. So it's very easy to see that indulging in anger doesn't get us anywhere. It doesn't create the solution. It doesn't allow for that space to see a solution. And then the other modes of conventional knowledge are to either avoid it or replace it. But these just kind of neutralize it. You know, if you're always avoiding your anger, then that's the same as not letting it be as it is. You know, you're giving independent meaning and power, saying, every time I experience anger, then I don't have this freedom, or I don't know what to do, or I, I might react. So there again, let it be as it is, rather than avoiding it, and then rather than replacing it with something different like positivity. Let it be as it is to see that this anger does not have the power to control us. It doesn't have the power to make us scold somebody and um, coming from a space of anger and blame. It allows for us to see if wrath is needed. Wrath is when you know a solution is needed and maybe you need to speak up a little bit. But all the focus on the blame and the, and the criticizing and what they've done wrong, that's not really the whole picture. You know, what will empower another person is something we can ask ourselves. You know, what can I say now that will, rather than making the other person feel wrong and excluded because they've done something, what can I say or do that will empower them to see they can also take responsibility for how they are in this life. So, I mean, we could talk about anger for hours and hours, but, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a serious topic. And then, you know, you, maybe you like to replace it with humor or, or something. But humor, I mean, humor's great. It's not we want to be all serious and following rules and regulations and having a robot-like conduct. But the more you rely on open intelligence, the more you let data streams be as they are, especially ones like wanting to be liked. You know, my humor was always coming from, you know, I need to make them laugh so I'll, I'll feel more included and they'll like me more and, and I'll feel better about myself and I'll be more popular. So all these ideas that I had, just letting all those ideas about myself be as they are, not defining who I am, then the humor can come very naturally, and it's more open-hearted, it's more inclusive. Sarcasm always has a tinge of putting someone down. You know, it can seem a little funny, but if you really look at it, you know, sarcasm is always directed at another person with a subtle hint of, you know, you're an idiot, or, you know, it's just not very, it's not coming from the heart at all. It's not coming from open-heartedness, so you'll start to see very directly if the remark you've made towards someone, is it really a, 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 an act of appreciation? You know, is it really saying, wow, I really appreciate you and you, all you offer? Or is it like just kind of a, a downplay? So you, you'll very quickly start to see this. And then, you know, the humor, it'll just become more humorous and, and more empowering, empowering humor. You get to laugh at all the data streams you have. We all have such similar data streams. I mean, it's not like everyone comes here and, you know, something like shame or guilt or embarrassment is only for a few people. Or feeling like we're not included, feeling like an outcast, or feeling arrogant and prideful like we know it all. You know, this is so natural to every one of us. So, you know, we come together to normalize all these thoughts, emotions, sensations, to see how alike we all are, and then it, it kind of lessens that tension of, are they going to, am I going to be kicked out? Will they like me? You know, then we can just be ourselves. Free, there's so much freedom in allowing ourselves to be as we are with all of our thoughts, emotions, sensations, and then seeing we do have empowering ways to be and speak and hang out together. So being as we are, you know, I used to say there was something wrong with my depression, there was something wrong with my anger, 
there was something wrong with my lack of ability and I put a lot of attention on that and I did a lot of self-help projects trying to correct it or remedy it become more powerful when I came here I just when I when I heard you can let it be as it is you don't need to effort to really find this freedom it, it, it resonated with me short moments of allowing all my data to be as it was and there was immediate relief and then a, a growing sense of relief a growing sense of empowerment that's that's brilliant having freedom and the immediacy of all circumstances we're in you know I had like running out of time and wanting to get things done quickly and you know that creates a lot of energy but if we're always you know just getting wrapped wrapped up in the concept of time it just doesn't allow for that view of the mountain being on top of the mountain all there ever is is this here and now moment spontaneously self-releasing like a line drawn in midair self-releases this here and now self-releases your anger self-releases your desire self-releases and you let your desire be as it is you see that you know it just it just self-releases and you're on to the next data datum and then you know allowing ourselves to enjoy the desire you know we see we don't have to necessarily engage in it I heard something yesterday the population a hundred years ago was 1.5 billion and what are we now? Over seven billion within a hundred years. There's a lot of acting out on desire going on there. <laughs> you get to see, you know, how you can really be discerning. You know, would it be would it be beneficial if I every time I felt desire jumped into that situation and really did something about it? You know, you know the outcomes. Then you're afterwards is like guilt, shame blame or you want more and it just creates a whole story you're distracted and then you want more connection and you know and then you're just missing that each moment there's this total vitality this total life fulfillment and satisfaction in each moment if we're always chasing experience which is what I used to do chase experience to have happiness then you're always chasing more experience and then you're on your deathbed wishing you had another experience feeling like you never did enough so my happiness now is not derived from a particular relationship it's not derived from how healthy I feel it's not derived from how much money I have it's not derived from the location that I'm in in the world derived from my current moment perception whether I feel sick or whether I feel healthy just letting it be as it is and seeing there's a natural inherent happiness this instinctive happiness